It's time for the Daily Stand-Up Podcast presented by Agile Dad with your host, Lee Henson. Without any further ado, let's get started. What are some best tips that you can do to allow teams to understand how to better avoid interruptions during their sprint? Now, I know that you can't stop all interruptions, but what do you do and how do you handle interruptions when they come so that it doesn't turn into context switching and cause all kinds of outstanding debt? Now, of course, I'm going to say the first thing you should do if you haven't done so already is pop over and read the document on the Agile Dad Downloads page about Team John. This is a more comprehensive view that we're not going to talk a lot about today on how to handle those interruptions. But what I will tell you is that in general, there are three types of interruptions that occur, and we will cover those. So the first interruption that occurs is what I call drop everything and deal with it, right? So this is where, you know, we are a large e-commerce website and we are unable to accept credit card payments online, yo. Okay, if that's happening, you can stop everything. You can kill the sprint if you need to to fix that problem. That would be so severe and so negative and have such big consequences that it's probably better to go ahead and address it now and get it over with, right? Uh, with those things happening, I think everyone would perfectly understand if all work halted or didn't move forward if we had to address and correct that issue. Okay, let's move on to what I call a secondary issue. Now, a secondary issue is interesting because secondary issues are probably the most common. So secondary issue would be we have a problem that we know is affecting a certain percentage of our general population, and it's not necessarily security related or a matter of life or death, but it's something that is having an impact and something that we likely should address. Now, what's interesting is at this point, I believe those issues need to be quickly reviewed by the product owner, any stakeholders might be involved, the scrum master, whoever's reporting the issue, and oftentimes someone who may be a representative from Team John who can help disclose or discuss the scope of what it's going to take to resolve said issue, right? And if you can get that army of people together to talk about it, what's going to happen is those conversations will be fruitful over time and you will be able to get your grasp on, you will be able to figure out what you can do and what you need to do in order to uh, handle the interruption. At which point the product owner should decide, instead of interrupting the current sprint, Right? Do we want to set up a very first item in an next sprint to address this issue and story point it and treat it just like a regular story with a, with a type of defect or known defect, right? Or do they want to say, you know what, this is not important enough for us to queue up, but we will keep it in our archive to make sure that if it ever comes up again, we'll know that it's something we need to address. So oftentimes what I find is that people will just automatically either A, try to trade it out for an item in a current sprint, which is way bad for them, or B, they'll try to just get it done in a way that um, it's going to either cause a great interruption or it's going to, and what ends up happening is the team's regular committed work doesn't get done because you let this interruption kind of thwart all forward progress with regard to everything else that the team is working on. So I think the key here is to understand the scope of what's being worked on and ask yourself, is this important enough to be addressed as a first item in the next sprint? If the answer is yes, then that's where it belongs, then that's where it goes. If the answer is no, we mark those with an acronym called KBNR, known but not resolved, and you can archive those. And then what happens over time is our goal is to make sure that we're doing all the things that we can to help assist as needed and as necessary to make sure the product or service that we're offering is the best it possibly can be, right? But we need to do so by not constantly being interrupted and by allowing teams to work together. And we need to avoid those secondary interruptions as best we can. Now, either it's something that's important enough for us to work on next or it's not. And if it's not, those things still get addressed. A lot of times the customer will find a suitable workaround or will uh, we'll accidentally address the need when we address something else that's in a similar place, right? I've just seen a lot of times where things are reported being critical and they're not that critical. Or sometimes people even try to disguise a request for enhancement in there and say, hey, let's take care of this when it's not even a defect at all. Okay, and then the third way to handle these is what I like to call, yeah, we know. And what that means is sometimes the organization will look at that and say, you know, yeah, that's 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 right. That is exactly what's happening. 
but it's not something that warrants us addressing it right now. It's a Category 3 issue, and it's something that we will mark known but not resolve, and we will come back to it. It's not a matter of uh, making sure that we always have maximized ability to address everything that comes in. I think that these Level 3 things are still important, don't get me wrong, but they're not important enough to be addressed as the very first item in the next sprint. If that happens, they get marked known but not resolved, and it's something that we can always come back to, time permitting, and it's something that we can address as we go with uh, with with an army of people ready to take care of these things if they become things that need to be taken care of. So known but not resolved is a powerful tool. It allows us to know that we're going to set up, outside of security issues, that we're going to set up one sprint per quarter where the team can address all this outstanding technical debt. And the rest of the details can be found in our Team John presentation. So it's interesting. So I guess what I'm trying to say is don't get all caught up in a madness around how things are reported and how you handle them. But have people who are there who can make quick decisions about what needs to be done and uh, progress with those people. Because what I can tell you is that um, there are a lot of people out there who believe they know what they're doing. But the people who best know what they're doing are the people who understand how to uh, how to incorporate or how to how to take care of inbound work. So that's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care.